the fifth video in our series reviewing polynomials. In this video we're going to focus on solving polynomial equations. And we'll probably go ahead and look at uh, a little bit more multiplying polynomials and some error analysis involving factoring polynomials. Alright, so we're going to solve this polynomial equation by factoring. Uh, the first step of factoring is to look and see if there's a common factor that needs to come out. There is no common factor, so we can go ahead and go straight into the factoring. A trinomial like this, if it's going to factor at all, it will factor as a binomial times a binomial. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we start by looking at the first term, the 2x squared. And this is pretty easy because there's only one way to factor 2x squared. It's got to be 2x times x. All right, but then we jump over and uh, we look at the, the 35. Don't even worry about the sign yet. Just look at the 35. Well, there are only two ways to factor 35. And uh, the most obvious one um, is 5 times 7. So that's the most likely. But... Uh, if somehow that fails, we will turn to 1 times 35. All right, but starting with the 5 times 7, okay, so 5 times 7. If this doesn't work, we'll try it the other way around, 7 here and 5 here. But here's the key. Inner plus outer must equal the middle. All right, that's so important. I'm just going to write that down. Inner plus outer should equal the middle. Okay, and here's what I mean by that. So this is the inner and this is the outer to which I refer. So inner, I have 5x and outer, and I'm multiplying here, outer, I have 14x. And uh, so somehow this has got to give me the middle of negative 9x. I can control the signs. Is there a way I can get a negative 9x out of 5x and 14x if I choose the signs properly? Well, yes, I can. All right, I, I know that 14 minus 5 is 9, so I know I can do it. If I have a positive 5x and a negative 14x, together that would make negative 9x. So that means for a positive 5x, then this would have to be positive. And for the negative 14, this 7 would have to be negative. Now, we always need to check one last thing. We need to check the sign, especially on the uh, constant. Does positive 5 times negative 7 give us negative 35? And yes, a positive times a negative is a negative, so that's, that works out fine. Okay, so w that means we have factored it properly. So we can go ahead to the next step. So after we have that, then we're going to set our factors equal to 0 and solve. So I've got 2x plus 5 equals 0 and x minus 7 equals 0. So subtracting 5 from both sides, I've got 2x equals negative 5. Dividing both sides by 2 So I've got x equals negative 5 over 2. So that is one solution to this equation. And over here, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So that's just going to give me x equals 7. So that is the other solution to this equation. And uh, in general, the degree is going to tell you how many solutions you're going to have. So if you have degree 2, you should be looking for two solutions. Now technically you could have fewer solutions because sometimes you'll get the same solution repeated. So you know maybe if something were to factor down as x minus 7 times x minus 7 then um, f as far as the solutions would go you get x equals 7 and you get x equals 7 again. So that would mean really you only have the one solution of x equals 7. But if you count the repeated solutions separately, you still see that there are two of them. 
So um, that would go along with having a degree two polynomial. So counting repeated solutions separately, the degree will always tell you how many solutions you have. So if you have a cubic, you'll have three solutions, etc. All right, um, that's just a little bit of where we're where we're headed. But for now, let's get on to number fourteen. As soon as I find it, it must be over here. Should erase this nonsense. Similarly, on number fourteen, first ask yourself: Is there a common factor? No, there's not. So let's go ahead and factor this thing as a binomial times a binomial. Okay, um, this time we have to be very careful with the first term, okay, which we start with, um, because it could factor more than one way. This could either be, uh, 4 could be 2 times 2, or it could factor as 1 times 4. We don't know yet. Um, I'm going to start with the 2 times 2 option and then go with the 1 and 4 second. So um, that would mean 2r times 2r to make my 4r squared. If it doesn't work out, though, I'll, just, I'll come back and try the 1 and 4 option. So next, we jump over and look at the 9. Uh, 9 also has two options. Uh, this is either going to be 3 times 3, or it's going to be uh, 1 times 9. So I'm going to start with the 3 times 3 option. OK. So remember this. Inner plus outer must equal middle. So I'm talking about this. This is inner, and this is outer. So inner, I've got 6r. Outer, I've got another 6r. I'm trying to get the middle of 12r. So this is looking really good. Um, to make 12r, positive 12r, I would need both of these to be positive which would mean both of these would be positive. All right, always check one last thing. Specifically, look at the sign of the constant. Are we getting it? Well, a positive times a positive is positive, so we are golden. So that means this is factored uh, correctly, so we can go ahead with the process. And we will start setting these factors equal to 0. So we will do 2r plus 3 equals 0. And another 2r plus 3 equals 0. Now these are identical. So this is going to be a situation where we have a repeated solution. So um, I would subtract 3 from both sides. So that's going to give me 2r equals negative 3. Then I would go ahead and divide both sides by 2. And so that's going to give me the final answer of r equals negative 3 over 2. Please leave it as a fraction. Don't go with the 1.5 option. And of course, this would give us the same thing. So there's no point in solving it again. So remember I said usually the degree is going to tell you how many solutions you'll have. Um, so it was degree 2, so I was looking for two solutions. Now, we could say we only have one solution because we have this um, r equals negative 3 over 2. But uh, if you understand that this is a repeated solution, and the, the reason why it, we only have one solution seemingly is that um, we really got the same solution twice, if you count the repeated solutions, it still matches the degree. Okay, um, anyway, uh, you wouldn't actually write it down twice, so r equals negative 3 over 2. That's the answer. All right, so um, now we have another multiplication problem. We had one similar to this earlier, so we're sort of double testing you on this, but whatever. It's pretty easy, so we don't care. Let's start by distributing the 3x to everything. So um, let's see, 3x times x squared, that's going to be 3x to the third power. 
and then 3x times negative 3x, that's negative 9x squared. And then 3x times 3 um, is positive 9x. All right, now let's distribute the negative 1 times everything. So negative 1 times x squared is negative 1x squared, or just negative x squared. Notice how I'm lining up the like terms. You do the same. Negative 1 times negative 3x is positive 3x. And negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. All right, go ahead and combine your like terms. So that's going to give us 3x to the third power minus 10x squared plus 12x minus 3. So that would be our answer to number 15. Okay, now we have this error analysis. All right, each of the following problems contains one error that has caused the final answer to be incorrect. Identify the mistake in the work by circling the error. Be precise. Then factor the problem correctly. So let's look at number 16. We're supposed to find the error and circle it. OK. So I guess this person decided to factor by grouping, which we didn't really do when it comes down to a trinomial. Um, but whatever, we can still find their mistake. So um, it, their first step, they took this negative 17x, and they went ahead and split that up into negative 15x and negative 2x. OK, um, that's fine. So then, so they must be grouping here. So our next move would be to pull out the common factor. Common factor is 3x. OK, and uh, so that would leave behind x minus 5. So that looks good. Oh, well, here's a problem right here. OK, this is a negative 2x. They pulled out a positive 2. All right, so I guess we should go ahead and circle their mistake, all right, because that's what the direction said to do. So there's the mistake right there. Um, that should have been a negative 2. And then we're supposed to go ahead and uh, finish it properly. So uh, we'll, we can just correct this and make it a negative 2. Um, so for that reason, um, when we pull away the common x minus 5 out front, or you, know, you could put it second either way, um, instead of being 3x plus 2, it should be 3x minus 2, OK? Because that should have been negative. All right, so I guess we can just write 3x minus 2 um, should be the correct answer. All right, so great. We did that error analysis. All right, I just noticed that at the bottom here, we're supposed to put an explanation of the mistake in words, and there's a line for the correct answer. So let, let me go ahead and, and do that. So in words, I would just say that they forgot to pull out a negative 2. They used positive 2 as the GCF. Um, when they should have used negative 2 as the GCF. OK, and um, like we said, 3x minus 2 times x minus 5. Uh, let's do that again for problem number 17. Um, circling the error, well, 
I'm not sure what to circle here, so I'm not going to fault anyone for not circling the error. The, the thing is, this is not factorable at all because it's not the difference of two squares. So maybe you could circle this because um, the way they factored it, it should have been a minus sign. But that's the original problem, so you can't really count that as an error that you're circling. Um, so don't really worry so much about circling the error part on this one. Um, but really, the answer should have been prime, because uh, this is unfactorable. That's all there is to it. Oh, OK, I guess down here we have to explain our mistake. So my explanation in words, the, um, the problem is the sum of two squares. which is unfactorable. <laughs> what? Unfactorable. Okay. You know, I didn't see all these spaces down here. So the correct answer is prime. Okay, so I guess I was supposed to do this explanation on this problem too. That is the end of this review. I hope it was helpful to you, and I'll see you out there in the next unit on the next video.